Do you tell people, hey, how you doing? I hear people saying, good. Like, what is good? You're in, you in, you living a human life. You have everything that you do. What is good? Can we be great? Can we be amazing? Can we be thrive? I don't, I don't want people to live anymore. I want them to thrive. And I want to tell like everyone that we have all the tools to thrive. And I think it just really starts with those four basic pillars. And it starts with, with our people when you ask me for the best medicine, I'm like, it's between your ears. Like that's where it starts from within us. Welcome back to the Reshape Your Health podcast. I'm delighted you're here and I'm so grateful that you're spending some of your precious time with me today. I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for subscribing to this channel on YouTube or podcast if you're listening. If you didn't know, those subscriptions help this show get seen by more people. And to encourage listeners who haven't done so yet, I've created a fun limited time giveaway to help motivate you to take action and show your support for the show. It's the new review contest and it's only for podcast listeners. I'm going to have a contest for YouTube subscribers later this summer. So to enter to win a special surprise, you'll have to do three simple things that will take you about five minutes of your time. Number one, subscribe to this podcast. Number two, leave a rating and review for this podcast. Number three, take a screenshot or picture of your rating and review and email me at mnolte at weightlossforhealth.com. So you can also message me on Instagram, the photo of your rating and review at Dr. Morgan Nolte. I'm going to take those submissions and draw a winner on July 1st. And I promise that the surprise is going to be well worth your five minutes. So thank you and enjoy this episode. How would you like to start having more energy, less inflammation and lose weight? What would you do with the extra peace of mind knowing that you had your health dialed in and under control? What problems would go away in your life if you were healthy? Today I'm talking with Navin Hetiarchi. You try to say that last name. He's an advocate of being the CEO of your own health and he was such a fun person to interview. We both believe that you have to take care of the person who takes care of you and that's you. We believe that you have everything inside of you to harness your full power and potential. Naveen has a really cool story. He's the former director of health, wellness, and performance for the Washington Wizards NBA basketball team. He holds a master's degree in sports medicine and has done over 20 years of experience working with NBA players, WNBA, and NFL. He also works with Olympians, U.S. women's soccer, para-Olympians, and NHL athletes. Celebrities and musicians from the Hollywood area also seek his support for their health and wellness. He's been featured in Men's Health, The Washington Post, The Washington Times, Geo News, NBA Philippines, and NBA Japan. Naveen is the founder of the Reddit Method, which stands for Root Cause, Evaluation, Diagnosis, and Transformational Treatment. Now, Naveen works with professional athletes and supermodels who have a ton of resources at their disposal. So you might think you're not going to relate to what he has to say because you don't make millions of dollars and you don't have a bunch of disposable income for fancy testing. But wait just a minute. Naveen talks about how 90 plus percent of your health results comes from the basics. Most of the advice he gives is free. That's right. 100% free. So before you spend any money, why not optimize what you can for free? Start with the lowest hanging fruit. For those of you already taking action, but want even better results, we have something for you too. We've carefully crafted this episode to give you concrete things you can do to get better data for your sleep and nutrition. Having concrete data can be tremendously helpful for knowing what to optimize next. And again, nothing we talk about today is crazy expensive. So whether you're just thinking about starting your healthy lifestyle, you're actually making changes, or you're in maintenance mode and you wanna optimize, this episode is for you. So many people are sacrificing long-term results for short-term gain. They are taking one step forward and two steps back. But if you want to get great long-term results, you'll need to slow down to speed up. You'll need to simplify to amplify. And as Naveen and I talk about through this interview, 
You have to do the work. It's not enough to use some of the tests that we talk about. You have to take action based on those testing results, based on the data. Now, while you're responsible for your health, that doesn't mean you need a whole lifestyle overhaul all at once. So I'm gonna challenge you to take just one thing from this interview to optimize. Get just 1% better each day, and that's gonna add up over time to big lasting results without the overwhelm. Plus, taking one step in the right direction each day gives you something to feel good about, no matter what the scale says. In this episode, you're going to hear Naveen's story and how he's worked all around the world, helping connect the functional medicine dots for professional athletes to help them operate at peak performance. You're going to learn about his unique Reddit method. Again, that stands for root cause, evaluation, design, and transformational treatment. Just learning how he assesses and treats high-level athletes will give you ideas for troubleshooting your own health problems. And be sure to listen all the way until the end because we saved the best for last. You're going to learn practical, simple, affordable solutions to optimize each of the four pillars of health, sleep, mindfulness, nutrition, and movement. Enjoy this interview. Naveen, thank you so much for joining us today for the Reshape Your Health podcast. We are delighted to have you. I know this is going to be an awesome interview, and I'm excited for our listeners to get to know you better. Let's just start out with who you are, and you have a pretty cool background. So tell us how you became um, so involved in professional sports and what you do now. Morgan, thank you so much for having me. I love your podcast. One of my favorite is uh, Dr. Nazir Ali. Um, I'm, I'm, that's me. Like he, I send it to my aunt and I say, aunt, um, I know I'm not a doctor. Sometimes you don't want to believe what comes through my mind, but here is a doctor just speaking and thinking and talking and almost sound like me exactly what I believe in. And I love it. So thank you for putting out amazing, great content. Thank you. You know, I work hard at it and you're a fellow podcaster. So you have the nine to thrive if people haven't checked that out and only fellow entrepreneurs know how much work goes in behind the scenes to make this weekly content possible. So I appreciate you, um, recognizing that. Thank you, Morgan. So my journey really started, um, in Sri Lanka. Um, I grew up, um, until pretty much a ninth grade until four, uh, 14 years old, I came to America and, um, Hey, the American dream, right? Like literally took off. Um, I went to high school here and, didn't um, didn't have an English background, so all my class were ESL. And I was telling my wife today that I was a true pioneer biohacking because um, I couldn't. Uh, my the way that I learned English was like Full House, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, um, A Team. So I watched it from from uh, listen, you know, watching TV. That's how I learned. And I was telling her this morning, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge. Uh, uh, audiobook reader so I was telling yes. them this morning that I, I'm probably one of the first audiobook readers ever she's like what do you mean I'm like you know when I came to America I would ask my American friends to read and I would record in a tape recorder and I would listen while I work out she's like what I'm like yeah like it just it just intuitive in, 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 in. so that's kind of like my journey I like biohack my way into a triple jump scholarship um, I was all always about optimizing health, wellness, and performance. It's kind of crazy that, you know, that's my title that I end up uh, with the Washington Wizards. So I went to college and then um, I studied sports medicine after graduation. I worked with the Washington Redskins, formerly Washington football team uh, for two years. Then um, I came to Washington Wizards. Um, and my, my, my first years was uh, only sports medicine. So I was uh, in the athletic training room and then I transitioned over to strength and conditioning. Then I still saw a lot of, lot of uh, uh, holes. So I was, they, you know, gave me a title and I was the uh, uh, bridging, the person bridging the gap between strength and conditioning and training room. So I was the guy who was connecting the dot. And that just took on another journey of, you know, I introducing you know all this functional medicine to, to the team all this testing to the team and I, that was just not only for the team because I was just like in my high school days when I came to America I was biohacking myself I was continuing to biohack myself and 
me biohacking myself that just kind of led all that to the team. You know, it could be getting IVs or uh, some kind of biohacking machine or ozone therapy. So I've been around the world. I've been around the country to figure out like, okay, who's the best person in um, Australia? So I was in one month over there in, in, a, in a clinic or Malaysia or Ireland. Like it was, uh, Morgan, you would appreciate it um, in like 2008. I was like dry kneeling. I need to learn this. I need to have this in my toolbox. 2008, yeah. Right? Oh, there's nobody in Washington, D.C. So I'm like, I got to go somewhere. So I went to Ireland. I did a two-week mentorship in Ireland. And when I came to D.C., they were like, oh, my God. Our team doctors were like, no, you can't needle anybody with other people watching. So they would put me in a private x-ray room to needle it, right? So those are some fun stories. And last year, I would needle people in the middle of the game. You know, like no fear, nothing. So it's just kind of like funny. So that's a little bit of background on me. It's pretty much like evolved and grow as every year. I want you to describe biohacking because I think that's a new term to my audience. Can you just really quick give us a brief definition of what that means? So biohacking is really biologically optimized who you are through, through could be supplements. It could be machines. So it could be like, you're getting the light therapy, you're getting IVs, you're getting um, hyperbaric chamber. So biologically through external stuff, you optimize in your, yourself. So it's, it's you kind of, the way that I love to biohack is that I test everything so I could quantify through my HRV or my CGM. I, I definitely want to talk a little bit about the CGM mm -hmm. too, uh, Morgan. Through my CGM, um, through my resting heart rate, I try to figure out, okay, what can I add? What variable could add that gives me so much more benefit? And then, uh, so that's a that's one thing about biohacking. But really, people want to biohack, but they don't want to do the rest of the little things that gives them ninety nine percent. Right? That's, that's right. That's right. Now I wanted to, we talked offline a little bit and you had some really cool things that you said, um, about, you know, we have the answers inside of ourselves, And so often you look to external things to fix you. You look to doctors, you look to pills, you look to like the CGM or different tests, but then the real magic is what you do with that information. That's so important. And it's so funny that you mentioned CGM because the week before your this episode is going to air in May. I actually have Molly coming on and she is from a CGM company. So we talk all about what CGM is. So people will have a really good understanding. Um, but let's, before we really get into the nitty gritty, I wanted to give people kind of an overview of your philosophy of care. So can you tell us about the R E D T the method that you use? And then I think that's a nice place that we can segue into how do we determine um, how do we use CGM and other things like that to, to find the root cause? So let's talk about that first. Give us an overview. So Morgan, uh, Reddit is kind of came through about how I look at it and people want to know my methodology. So I kind of really put a name to it. So it's, it's everything that I look at is root cause. You know, why if our one side of the face is not working, our, our performance not getting better, like what's the reason, the back pain or, or bloating or irritation, I'm trying to figure out what's the cause and just trying to go as far as you can. It just could be from the, the way that you were born, right? It could be the C-section, like I literally go there to C-section, oh, I could look in and see DNA. Not I could, but I really look at the DNA. So I wanna know before this person was born, where did that person really come from, right? That DNA kind of gives me. Then I literally start from the birth and figuring out, okay, what kind of led us to be, be where we are? What led us to be that you have constant neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, or it could be eczema or whatever. So that's the so, so root cause, root cause. Then we got to design based on the root cause, you know? So I'm not treating you based on the symptoms that you came from. You came from your Achilles tendon rupture. Uh, that might be the last thing that I treat. I'm going to spend 70% of my, my, my treatment, my energy, our energy on figuring out what's what happened. So first of all, we could prevent it. And second, the treatment is going to be that much flowing. It's going to be that much easy. We're not going to have... The, the cause of it keep coming and bugging us. So that's the root cause. 
and design, that's a deeper design. Then T is really not treatment, but transformational treatment, right? Treatment is good. You could go to keep going to the chiropractor every month or whatever, right? But that's just putting a bandage. When you come to me, if you get the same injury or something related to it, that's pain for you. And that's not good for my business and my ego, right? So this is like, yeah. people, right? <laughs> like, so we need to transform your treatment. We got to change your, not mindset, you got to change you as a human being to prevent that everything that would be related to and prevent future injury. So that's the, the Reddit method. And I think it's so cool that we come from really different backgrounds, but we have that core philosophy of prevention and of taking responsibility for our own health and letting that internal state drive our external results. So let's talk about root cause from your perspective. What are some of the most common root causes for health problems that you notice in your clients? So I, I want to go back to that biohacking question. You know, people spend so much money on biohacking, right? Uh, they do hyperbaric chamber, $55 or floor tank or um, cryo chamber, but they don't want to do the basic simple things, right? Those bio, I mean, people are like, one of the questions that I get asked daily is like, hey, what's the best um, uh, supplement to go to sleep? Or what's the best CBD? I'm like, okay. Let's backtrack. Are you doing the other 99% that would give you a benefit? Because the, the pills and all this other stuff is only, you know, one to 8%. So Morgan, to answer your question, what's, what's the root cause? It's like, we are not doing our basics, right? I kind of call it my four pillars of sleep, nutrition, uh, mindfulness, and movement. Like, do you have those four pillars dialed in, right? Are you... Yes, you're sleeping at two o'clock. So does that mean that you're not, you're not with the circadian rhythm? Is that mean that you're not reproducing your testosterone, your pro proper hormones, because you're not in that proper circadian rhythm and you're not having your uh, quality of deep sleep, your REM sleep, you're not hitting those numbers? Well, any pill doesn't matter, right? If you don't have the, that's, so that's the pillar, kind of the, the ground floor. If you don't have the ground floor, it doesn't matter how much you go to the gym or trying to fill up the 10th, 11th, 12th, 40th floor, it's going to shake. So the sleep is the foundation. Then we kind of go to the food. It's, it's everything that you're talking about. Real food, real ingredients, and the food that works for us, our thumbprint diet, right? My thumbprint is different mm -hmm. from yours, too different from your mom. So we got to figure out what food resonates with us, what food is good for us and our gut and microbiome likes that, you know, like when you see the, when you hear from the CGM, that's, you'll see it like two food affect two different people in a, in, in a very different way. Yeah. And the third pillar is, is being mindful. I see so many people having adverse reactions to help because of not being mindful and they don't tie it because of like, especially now, there's no transition of work, home, life. Oh, there's yeah. People, right? And they're not present. So that that is another way of crossing disease because it's, you know, mindful. Mind is what kind of causes disease. And then the last thing is um, something that people want to put that first, which is movement, right? People want to, like, even me, I want to go and cross it. I want to go and play soccer for three hours or play basketball. But do I have the basic fundamental moments, right? Can I touch my toe? Can I crawl like a baby at three months mark? Can I roll like a baby at five months mark? Can I half kneel like a baby at seven months mark? Can I squat like a baby, like a normal person and play? And can I walk like a normal human being, right? Morgan, I know you, every time you go for a walk, you see like, oh my God, that person is not swinging their arm or they're on their right Yeah, hip. right. <laughs> right, like we see that and that's not normal. So, if they're not working like a normal, walking like a normal human, human being, that means we know they're not breathing like a normal human being. That means that they're not pumping that digestive system like a normal human being. So that means, right, there's, there's stuff happening because of we are not being normal human beings. So we got to have the basic things. And everything that I just mentioned not, doesn't cost you anything to sleep, doesn't cost you anything to eat because you're already eating, right? doesn't cost you anything to be mindful at being present and learning how to turn the, the media or the external stuff and doesn't cost you anything to get on the floor and act like a baby. 
I think it's so telling that what we just talked about, you said, you know, one to 8% comes from biohacking, but the rest of it is that foundational stuff, the sleep, the mindfulness, sometimes I call it like stress management, nutrition movement. And I love that you said movement is in basic movement, not vigorous exercise. It's just, are you able to move your body? If not start there, start with that low hanging fruit. But I think a huge issue is our culture of instant gratification. Our lights turn on automatically. Our sinks turn on with a tap, our toilets flush themselves, and we want a quick fix. And what people are doing is they are sacrificing their long-term results for quick fixes. And they keep putting band-aids on it and hoping the next pill or biohacking thing, like you said, they're kind of like working on the 20th floor of the building when what they need to work on is consistency in the foundation. And I wanted to get your opinion on this, especially because you work with such high level athletes. I have been thinking a lot about consistency and I think that commitment creates consistency this is a huge problem for people. It's almost like I can't be consistent with my diet. And I'm like, well, if you're inconsistently consistent, you're still consistent. It's just not in what you think is good for you. So how do you convince people to be fully committed to their health, to their lifestyle, to these foundational things that have delayed gratification when we're so used to instant gratification? You know, Morgan, you're so right. We are looking for everything to be quick, just like you mentioned, from the dishwasher to the toilet, kind of like somebody else doing the work and we have gotten lazy. We don't want to do the work, you know, like we don't even know phone numbers anymore. We don't even know how to get home. (laughs) We are using Waze GPS, right? Like that's me. That's all of us. Like I probably don't know anyone's phone number. I know. (laughs) But we can't do that for our health. We actually want to know our phone number, right? That means we need to know our circumference size. We need to know if you could touch the toes. We need to know when's the last time that we were present. We need to know our real phone number that is deep sleep and REM sleep percentages, right? Like did we get hour and a half to three hours of those? Um, If not, then we're going to be depending on the big pharma, right? They don't really Mm -hmm. care how nice, how pretty, how kind you are. They're going to charge you. They're going to have the surgeries on you. It's like when you open the can, it's it's a mess, right? When you do a surgery, it's a mess. When you take a pill, it's going to help you. One thing It's going to have nine side effects. Now we are, your words, we are consistently bad then. So let's not get to that point. Let's know that we have the control of our health. Like, that's what I want to tell you. Like, that's what I want to share. That's my new path. Like, I literally went from helping in the NBA 15 athletes who are millionaires want to help 15 million, 50 million people. Like, right, I just came, I, I was in Tanzania and Zanzibar, and I saw these people, uh, don't want to say these people, but Maasai people, they didn't have anything, but how happy, how beautiful they are like they had their smile is so big moment it was unbelievable and their health was amazing no spots no issues and when i was asking them about sickness they were like oh yeah our cows and our sheep get sick sometimes i'm like no 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 humans like what do you do i'm like what do you mean i'm like don't you get sick i'm like they're like they couldn't understand it they couldn't understand the wow word. And I'm like, how about babies? They're like, yeah, when baby has something, the wife go to the woods, they get some elderberries or whatever, put it with the milk and that's it. They're done that day, they're 100%. So we have all like, let's not, you know, you, you talked about quick fix as in quick meal, right? Like quick fix to quick meal is can. Now we open the can. Now, not only what's in the can is bad, but the BPA to aluminum, right? The artificial flavor, so much stuff but can we instead of being so much stuff instead of being a quick fix let's be adults and let's take care of ourselves as in like let's find the whole foods that work for you that that needed the sun the ground the water you know and that's the only way that we could stay healthy by taking care of our own self and you just gotta own up to it like you just gotta literally say hey look i'm tired of looking like this I'm tired of like feeling good. Like you tell people, hey, how you doing? I hear people saying, 
good like what is good you in you in you are living a human life you have everything that you do what is good can we be great can we be amazing can we be thrive i don't i don't want people to live anymore i want them to thrive and i want to tell like everyone that we have all the tools to thrive and i think it just really starts with those four basic pillars and it starts with with our people when you ask me for the best medicine i'm like it's between your ears like that's where it starts from within us yes and i loved a quote from your website that i'm going to read right now it says if you don't take proper action now, you are going to be another customer and contributor to the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company's profits, spending your hard earned, hard earned money and savings on pills and surgeries instead of living your life to the fullest. You've been programmed to believe in quick fixes that are band-aids for your health, treating only the symptoms without really fixing the fundamental root causes of your health issues. So they never surface again. You're already working against yourself and you're working backwards. I mean, I think it's so funny because we are efficiency snobs in this culture. We want things as fast as possible. And what we don't realize is we need to slow down to speed up. We need to slow down, do our health, do those foundational things right the first time to speed up and get long-term results. Otherwise you're always taking a step forward with the next yo-yo diet. And then two steps back with all of the shame and guilt and self-criticism. And that's a whole nother thing. I want to talk about the CGM continuous glucose monitoring and other basic tools that you would recommend to the everyday person listening to this podcast. Um, maybe they don't have, you know, millions of dollars, um, of resources to spend on testing. So what are some basic testing procedures that you recommend to determine where you're at with your health and help prioritize your next steps? Um, let's kind of go through each pillar and see what's kind of the best, right? So pillar number one for sleep, we just got to track the sleep. We just got to figure out if you getting my favorite numbers is deep sleep, REM sleep, HRV, resting heart rate. I want to know when the heart rate got lowered. I want to know how the heart rate, that's just going to tell me a lot about my state of being, my state of recoveryness, my state of maybe the next morning, what I got to do in terms of workout. So we got to do some kind of tracking. Uh, could it be an aura? I personally use for the aura for like about last three years. And I use a whoop for about four years. So um, those are some of the trackers. There's so many trackers out there. You know, some, some of them get validated, like NBA validated aura. So I kind of like aura and it's just easy. It's a ring. Wait, before you go on, HRV, heart rate variability, is that what we're talking yeah. about? And just so that people can walk away with really concrete things, what numbers are you specifically looking for when it comes to how long do you want to see someone in REM sleep? What type of heart rate, heart rate variability pattern are you looking for? And then how would you interpret that information? For example, their exercise the next day. So, um, for deep sleep, I would say somewhere around 1.5 to two hours. And for REM sleep, I will say uh, two to three hours um, is, is minimal. Like I need those hours. So that's that's a huge number that I look at it. Then I really look at the heart rate. I want to know, first of all, I want to know what time they achieve the lowest heart rate. Um, if I'm just looking at those numbers, I could say, hey, this person achieved the lowest heart rate at 6 a.m. That means the rest of the time they were... They were on a sympathetic, they were on a fight or flight, they were digesting instead of, or they were, they were uh, working instead of rest and digesting. They're not in a parasympathetic. So that number really helps me, especially, you know, basketball games at seven o'clock, they eat at 10 o'clock, they go to sleep and I get to see like, they're still at 60 beats per minute. I'm like, you didn't sleep last night because you played, you went on a little jog while you're sleeping because you're hard rate at a jog pace, right? So we get to know now next ah. week, you might not need to jog because you jogged last night. So you might have to come up with a different workout plan based on the heart rate. And Morgan heart rate variability is really so variable. It's just kind of based on that person. So I need like a, a few weeks, few months to kind of see the trends. I want to know what is a normal for that person. And based on that, I could kind of figure out, all right, this morning you're on a parasympathetic or sympathetic. Like what do I need to dial it in? Like that could be just 
uh, going outside, grounding the barefoot, or it could be that getting in a cryo chamber to kind of wake his system up. You know, so just very uh, particular to that person and based on that day. Um, so that's the sleeping component. And then the nutrition component, um, I love the CGM. So CGM, I probably wore it like three years ago. I probably won the first people to wear it. And the reason that I wore it is that I kept on doing blood work and my, my fasting glucose was like 90. So if you know about glucose, right? If you go to the doctor, 90 is an amazing number, you know, somewhere around 85, 90 is like you get a passing grade. But if you look at studies around 1950s, the glucose was like 75 to 85. So you talk about low hanging fruit, we kind of lower the rim of foot. It's just like testosterone, right? Back in the day, really good to have 900. Now it's like 700 and 500. It's like we are bringing the, bringing the, the, the we're lowering the bar. Lower we're lowering the, the standard bar. because well, everyone else is unhealthy and now it's normal to be unhealthy. Right? So we're going to lower the bar. So we all feel better. Exactly. Just like the vitamin D, like we are lowering and saying, Oh, everybody has this. So we, it might be good. So I'm like, okay, this doesn't make sense because pretty much there's no sugar in my diet. I'm extremely healthy. I'm supposed to be the expert. Like, why is my blood glucose at 90? So I'm wearing the CGM. It's the brand new technology. And guess what I found out? My highest glucose is when I'm in the shower late to work. So even though I don't have any sugar in my body, right? Cortical neogenesis, like my liver dumping sugar because I'm late to work in a road trip. It could be I'm late to the bus for the team game or I'm here, I'm late. And, and that just averaged out to be 90. It's like, what? So that was a big like aha moment that I, I couldn't get away from CG. I'm like, I am sold. Then, you know, ever since I'm like hooked, I'm putting on every patient, I'm putting on basketball players to figure out, I'm using as mindfulness because I know there's no glucose in my body, right? So that's the gauge of like, okay, I am on a fight or flight or I'm resting and digesting. Like I got to bring my numbers down. So I wrote an article just to be like, what's the best way to bring your glucose down? Go to a corner and meditate. Like within 10 minutes, your glucose back, like mine, right? Because what I eat is up to, back up to 70. Like how did my blood change within 10 minutes? Right? That's, That's interesting. And just for people who are kind of new to the podcast, I talk about hormones a lot, specifically insulin. And so what he's talking about here is your cortisol goes up and that puts your body in fight or flight and you need blood glucose or energy to fight or flee. And so that's why your blood glucose goes up when you're stressed out. I just wanted people to kind of close those loops, connect the dots between your glucose and your stress. Okay. Keep going. This is really interesting. Then at the same time, you could use, um, like with my dad, my dad, obviously coming from Sri Lanka, this guy loves banana couldn't get out of banana. Like my dad could crank up five bananas a day. <laughs> I couldn't get away from him, but he saw the CGM. He put the CGM on and, and he understood, you know, he understood what it was doing to his uh, blood glucose. Man, this guy hadn't eaten a banana at all. That's so funny. he put it like about a year ago and he loves the CGM because he could really see, okay, my sweet potato baked, could cooked, boiled, it's different. My sweet potato that I cook today and eat tomorrow is different because it broke down starchy sugar, right? Increase the fiber, like it's different. So every food affects different people different way. And my now it's like a competition between my mom, not a competition, but my mom and dad, like they wanna know like how food responds. So that's, they're in charge of their, the CEO of their own health. You know, my dad like lost like probably like close to 50 pounds just because understanding that dad, this banana probably had no nutritional value because it was picked up in Mexico. It came to the Whole Foods in Washington, DC. That's 10 days and that's not organic. So there's no nutritional value, but paper is literally paper and, and flavor, you know? Um, so just understanding, having stuff like that, we get to understanding the varying the sleep tracker, we get to understanding that Every time you go to sleep at night, it's disrupt your sleep for hour. So maybe we move the water early before you sleep. So those are the biohacks that we could learn and customize ourselves. You know, maybe we see on the app that 
my body temperature is so high. Maybe we take a sheet out or maybe we set the room temperature to 66 or something low, right? We know that maybe you're waking up so many times at night because you're sweating and now it's, if you could see it that your body temperature goes up two degrees when you sleep. So those are customizing yourself and you don't need the doctor, you see it, you know? Um, then one thing that I would love for, for your audience and my people that I talk about, really understand the body fat, really understand the, the visceral fat, really understand where, where, your, where your fat is. Uh, and maybe doing like a DEXA, you know, DEXAs are like really cheap. It's somewhere between $150 and $35. I think everybody should kind of see that. I think when we see those numbers, it's just an eye opener. You know, Now like, tell us what that is for people who are like, well, what's a DEXA? So tell De us what a DEXA is. Yeah, so DEXA is like an MRI machine. You lay down and it's, I would say the gold standard for body fat. And it just kind of shows you how much fat around your organs, how much fat you have belly fat. Uh, and you might even see like, oh, wow, no wonder I have knee pain because I'm carrying 60 pounds of fat, right? Think about it, 60 pounds of oh, fat. Oh, yeah. Somewhere, right? Like we take off all of a sudden, you're lighter. It's, it's not that, you know, doctors say don't run. It hurt, it'll hurt your knee. No, it's how you run. Well, if you're carrying 60 pounds or 30 pounds or 50 pounds, dumbbell when you run is going to hurt your knees. You know, yeah. not only that, it's going to press on your heart. It's going to increase your heart rate or it's going to stress your hormonal level because that's extra weight that this is unnecessary that's in your house, in your, in your house that's taking up space. So um, I, I love that. That's one of my things that I love to do uh, because of the price, because of the, the market that's kind of give us like an eye opener. I kind of, I kind of want that. Um, then, you know, the other thing is just, just the basic moments, just going back to the basic moment. Like we want to go to the other part and say, Hey, open my knee, fix my knee. But let's, let's see if your knee works like a knee, right? Can you stand on one leg? Can you touch your toes? You know, can you do a piston squat or can you squat all the way down and just stay there for a minute and breathe like a normal human being? Um, do you have that? Well, maybe if you get yourself to do some single leg squats, obviously, you know, you start from somewhere. You don't run the marathon the first day. But you start from holding on to a table, holding on to a door, slowly going down. All of a sudden, your knee pain is gone, right? Like, like Morgan and I, do, it, we are, Morgan is a doctor, we are expert, but we really, when you come to see us, we really address the simple stuff. We really make sure the big toe like works like a big toe and the knee works like a knee, right? We do the basic stuff. So when people, the listeners understand that basic stuff, it's just, you are again, CEO of your own health. Yes. And I think another really important thing when you're talking about visceral fat, you don't have to go get a DEXA. If you're like, that's way extreme for me. You can get a tape measure and you can take your waist circumference. And I'm going to do a blog post. I always do a blog post to correspond with each video. And so you can go to my blog at weightlossforhealth.com and I'm going to put cutoff scores. So if you do want to measure your waist circumference, you can kind of know if you're in the healthy, uh, the, the risk or the high risk range. But I wanted to ask you, I love anatomy. And so I, as a physical therapist, I took anatomy in undergrad and I was an anatomy TA in undergrad. Then I had to take it again in physical therapy school. And I was an anatomy TA then. So I have been through anatomy probably six or seven times. And I love dissecting. I know this might sound gross, but I love dissecting the human body. And I thought it was so fascinating to see different body types dissected and you can cut through the skin. And then you see that subcutaneous fat that's above the muscle layer. And then, so for people, if they want to know, I wonder if I have a lot of visceral fat or not just right now, you can grab your stomach and whatever you can grab with your hands and jiggle around that subcutaneous fat. That's not necessarily the dangerous fat. What's interesting is when you cut through that abdominal muscle wall, you open it up and you see all those organs. And I hope I'm, I'm, I hope I'm really grossing people out right now. And, uh, or maybe it's interesting and you see the fat that is surrounding those internal organs. And you're like, this 
is not where this is supposed to be. This is not what this is supposed to look like. So give us some really important information on how we get rid of that dangerous visceral fat. If someone's really struggling with that belly fat and a lot of my, my listeners are postmenopausal women, right? So when estrogen goes down, insulin resistance goes up, belly fat goes up. What do you recommend they do to try to get rid of that visceral fat? Uh, Morgan, I'm a huge uh, cadaver dissection fan as well. Yay! <laughs> I love this place. There's a place in uh, uh, Boulder, Colorado. It's a dissection lab. It's amazing. I'm, I'm blanking out on the name of the person. He's like, really? He got two clinics. So we were there for like four days and it was dissection and needling. Oh. It was really cool. So highly recommend that. I got to send you that stuff. So yeah. um, I think on top of my mind, I think um, the waist circumference are cut off numbers are like 35 for women inches and 40 ish for, um, for men. For men. Yeah. But I kind of like it like 37 and 33. That's kind of like my, my own numbers. Um, so you talked about what can we do? And, and you said the, I think you said the big word, the insulin word. You know, I think everything related to insulin, Morgan, um, you know, we could kind of like stay in the track about, you know, you talked about uh, menopause and premenopause, like maybe like PCOS type of symptoms, right? right? Like those, those belly fat, um, the, the acne to the, the male pattern, balding, all that is really the root cause. Like, let's go back to root cause, right? Insulin. Right, yeah. And how did that happen with the insulin, right? It's, it's what we put in our mouth. So it just really almost too simple. And it just really started from this, this you know, you, we, we started this quick fix of food that, you know, there's, I read an article that some of the Sioux, Sioux animal didn't even want to eat the fruit because they were such a hybrid. It's so sugary. They, they couldn't eat it, you know? And so everything that we eat is sugary. Like I seen, you know, obviously when we travel, we go to five-star restaurants and I'm eating the Brussels sprouts and my, my glucose is not well. I'm like, ah. So I told the chef, I'm like, chef, this Brussels sprout is amazing. What did you do? It's like, yeah, I put some maple syrup. Oh, I'm like, damn. I know. Doesn't, isn't that disappointing? You're like, don't put sugar on my vegetables. Right? Like, so if you look at it, like I would say 90% of the restaurants, they put sugar. Um, my, my, my wife is a huge uh, food TV show. And I'm like, I'm like, sweetie, you see the chef that's cooking it? They don't look healthy. So that means what they're serving is not healthy. I'm not saying that, but what I'm trying to say is that look how many recipes have some type of sugar. You know, sugar, sugar, fruit sugar, or, or, or like sugar is sugar. So it's gonna, we have a threshold. Like going back to the Maasai tribe that I saw, like Morgan, you got beautiful teeth. Their teeth are so beautiful, like white, like your pitcher. And and that, that's the real Maasai, right? And so now you see young Maasai people who go to the village and come back. You, you don't even have to ask them if you go to the village. You look at their teeth. And oh, wow. then it's like color your hair, like blonde, right? Like yellow. It. You're like, wow, you go to the city, right? They're like, yeah, you have a job? They're like, yeah. Because they eat the flour, the sugar, the, the, the quick fix, the stuff that comes from the, the packets, that conventional stuff, you know? Um, when we eat conventional stuff, we just gave our power away. So let's kind of dial it back to what can we do? The only thing that we can do is really be, know what you put on your body, know what the animal ate. Like now I need to go to the farm, right? We are going to the farm this afternoon now because I'm, I want to know when I go to the farm, how's that cow treated? Because if that's stress animal, that's an amyloid that I'm getting. I'm eating a stress animal. I'm eating inflamed mm. food, right? If the, if the animal is fed soy, you just talked about estrogen, right? I'm getting soy. If the animal ate corn, I'm, I'm getting that, right? So I want to know what the animal ate. So that's, we need to be in charge of it. We need to know where that avocado came from. We need to know if I go, even at Whole Foods, if I get a papaya from Whole Foods that came from um, uh, Mexico, it got, or Hawaii, it got pesticides. Like we need to know those like just basic things. We need to understand the soil, right? We need to know the basic stuff so we could keep the, not only the insulin that we're, 
insulin, but everything else, like I call type three diabetics, Alzheimer's, like all right. these athletes that I work with, they're pounding Gatorade and all these sports. Oh, drink. yes, but yes. More sugar than pack of M&Ms. I know. And they're fasting blood glucose. It's like worse than anybody else. Yes. That those new bolt Gatorade commercials just drive me insane because I'm like, well, there's still quite a bit of added sugar in those. Yes. They have added protein, but why don't you go just eat some, some real protein and cut the added sugar. You have to look at your food labels. And I think we're going to wrap it up just from a time sake, but so the takeaway point there, reduce belly fat, reduce added sugar, eat real food, know what your food ate and dial in these core health pillars. That's where you're going to get the majority of the results. And for people listening, you do not have to do this in one day. You don't have to do it in a year. It took you years and years and years to get you to this unhealthy state. It is okay to give yourself grace and patience as you move into your healthy lifestyle. I think, um, you know, both of us, we didn't get healthy overnight we didn't develop this appreciation for health overnight. So I think it's important to remind listeners, yeah, you might be really motivated right now, but you might also be a little overwhelmed. So, you know, just take it one day, one step at a time. I want you to tell our listeners where they can learn more about you and your work. Um, so right now I have a new uh, website. It's a uh, Naveen health and, um, I'm on IG Instagram. I try to put some stuff content out there to help people. Uh, to serve better. So it's N-A-V-I-N dot H-E-T. Um, and I have a Twitter account. It's N-A-V-I-N underscore H. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Naveen. It was a pleasure to talk with you. I cannot wait to connect with you in the future again and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much, Morgan. It was absolutely my pleasure. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Wasn't Naveen great? I loved his enthusiasm and joy. His passion for life is contagious. I know we covered a lot in that interview and your head might be spinning with new ideas and information. So let's bring it down to the foundations for just a minute. What is one way you could optimize your sleep, nutrition, mindfulness, or movement this week? Just one. It could be more intentional water. It could be setting an alarm at night so you stop watching TV and go to bed. Maybe going for a 10 minute walk. Pick just one thing and fully commit to doing it this week. You really do need to watch out for overwhelm when you're losing weight. Your brain does not like overwhelm. It does not like change. So if you can ease into it with baby steps, you're going to be much more likely to stick with your plan in the long run. Now, remember about the new review contest for this podcast. That's only for podcast listeners, YouTube subscribers. You're going to have your own thing later this summer. So to enter, you need to do three things. It's going to take you five minutes. Number one, subscribe to this podcast. Number two, leave a rating and review for this podcast. And number three, take a screenshot or picture of your rating and review and email it to me at mnulty at weightlossforhealth.com. Or you can message me the photo on Instagram at Dr. Morgan Nulty. I'll take all the submissions and I'll draw a winner on July 1st. I promise the surprise will be well worth your time and I so appreciate your support and the content that I produce each week. If you want to connect more on social media, you can find me on Instagram. Again, that's at Dr. Morgan Nolte. I love hearing your takeaways. So take a screenshot of this episode and tag me so that I know what you're finding most helpful. All right. I'll talk with you again. Same time, same place next week. Bye for now.